Okay, so Tom, thank you very much, Tom Canavan, thank you very much for coming to Marlborough today, and um, I'm Marcus Pickens, so we just thought we'd, we've, after we've done our regional selection here, we thought it's probably a good opportune time to get some comments from you on just what you've seen, and um, you were here a little while ago, only uh, probably 16, 15 months ago. Yeah, yeah, but and, months ago. Yeah, and just uh, nice to have you back so soon again to see what, what else is happening in Marlborough, so thank you got any comments on what you've seen? Well, sure. I mean, I could go on forever, probably. You know, it's such an interesting tasting. The selection you've put together for me of about 35, 36 Yeah, it'll be about that many. Um, so we covered Sauvignon Blanc, of course. But in terms of the white wines, there was Gruner Veltliner, there was Pinot Gris, there was Gilbert Straminer, there was Chardonnay. There was a whole kind of panoply of styles. And I think that's kind of half the message that I would, um, would take away from here is that Yes, Marlborough does this most amazing, distinctive style of Sauvignon Blanc. And um, again, I, I could come back to that because I thought there was such a variety of styles of Sauvignon there. But it's this kind of undercurrent of new varieties, new things, these aromatic varieties, mm. which, which I found really, really exciting because um, some of them express the kind of Marlborough style. They have that slightly kind of bright in your face kind of style that Marlborough does so well with Sauvignon Blanc and you see it in the Gewurz and you see it in the Gruner and it's that kind of variety of styles but still with something that's essentially Marlborough that I thought was really really interesting about the tasting. Great, Very good comments. So I guess is that, you know, being the master of all things, is that a is that a is it a doable proposition for Marlborough? Is that something we're gonna really struggle with to try and communicate well, beyond Sauvignon Blanc to the world? Yeah well I mean I, I don't think you're the master of all things. I, I mean, we're not going to see the really big, rich, ripe Bordeaux styles coming from no. Albra, I think. But in terms of aromatic grape varieties, I think the story's been all about Sauvignon Blanc. Mm. And that's an easy story to tell because there are fewer, more distinctive wines in the world than Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc. Yes. But it has that punch yeah. and that vivacious character. I mean, that's something that other regions would would die for, frankly, because it is so distinctive and mm. so Marlborough. I guess the challenge is that the way that people kind of fell out of love with Chardonnay and the, you know the kind of oak style of big buttery yes. in your face Chardonnay yep. that Australia did so well, the way people fell out of love with that, there's a danger that people fall out of love with Sauvignon Blanc. And I'm really pleased to see in the in the year and a half since I was last here, or kind of four years or so since I last did a big tour here. It's even Sauvignon seems to be moving on completely. I mean, people are trying styles with adding some wood, adding some wild yeast ferment, adding some lees stirring, doing some different things with Sauvignon and moving that picture on. And the, kind of, the, the other side of that coin is trying the new varieties, of, or not new varieties, but things like Gruner Veltliner, which are recent plantings, mm, very. which are really, really interesting, have some of the Sauvignon, Marlborough Sauvignon punch, but do it with a different variety and pair back some of those kind of um, really, really exuberant characters that some people love, some people don't love so much mm. about Sauvignon Blanc. Yes, yes. But when you see it with <clears> a different variety, handled slightly differently, it's it's a really interesting place to be where you're kind of um, halfway between Marlborough style as people kind of have a preconception yes. of it and doing something different. Great. And um, finally, um, just um, Pinot Noir. There were a few Pinot Noirs here today. Yeah, what were you, uh, what's I your impression? I enjoyed the Pinots, I must admit. You know, Pinot Noir is an interesting grape for New Zealand because Martinborough came first, if you like. Yes, it was the one that put it on so. the map. Yep. You know, Thank still, you, Martinborough. Still makes some amazing they wines. They do. Central Otago was grabbing all the glory at the moment. Yep. Uh, Marlborough is coming in under the radar slightly, but we tasted, uh, I think, six mm, pinots there. Yes. And I have to say, really, really lovely wines. Really nice balance between... Um, they had they had a lovely, fresh, red fruit juiciness to them. Had a bit of weight and a bit of structure, and I really enjoyed the wines. You know, um, it's going to be interesting to watch over coming, over coming years where New Zealand goes with Pinot Noir. Mm whether they can uh, carve out a real kind of uh, identity for Pinot Noir on their own, but certainly the Marlborough ones that I tasted there are all pretty well priced, yeah. delivering a really good glass of wine for the money and delivering authentic Pinot uh, flavours and uh, 
authentic expressions of Pinot. Mm. So I found it a really interesting tasting too. I'm looking forward to tasting. I'm going down to Central Otago tomorrow. Great. But the, the start of the, the Central Otago tasting that I'm going to taste wines from each different region of New Zealand and there's lots of lots of Marlborough wines lined right. up there too. It's going to be great to taste these regions against each other and see where New Zealand is in terms of Pinot Noir. Oh, great. We've got a lot of lot of um, excitement around that variety so yeah hopefully you benefit from that experience as well. Cheers, thank Marcus. you very much for Thank coming. You. See you Bye. soon.